about your childhood and how you feel that you have differed? I don't, in some ways, I haven't differed very much. I think um, <laughs> my dad tells a story of me being a little girl, um, and he, he always laughs when he tells the story. He would tell me to jump. I was a toddler. I was like two, three. He would tell me to jump, and I would jump really, really, really high, as high as I could. But I, was all, I would always keep one foot on the ground. And um, I think I'm still a little bit like that, except that there are things that if I'd known when I was little, I, I'd be, like the things that would surprise me, I've moved 15 times within a 20 year time span. I've lived all over the country. I, I didn't ever see that coming. Um, the thing I remember wanting to be other than a college theater professor was we went to this little town in Illinois called Galena when I was like in fourth grade and it was all like hillside, it's where Ulysses S. Grant is from, there are like coal mines there, it was very different from where I grew up and I thought there are all these beautiful farmhouses and so <laughs> what I wanted to do was I wanted to live in a farmhouse and have a whole bunch of animals and write books. Can you tell me um, a fun story from your childhood days? Yes, it was embarrassing. Um, <laughs> uh, my sister and I and friends uh, were uh, on the beach and didn't have uh, swimsuits with us. We were going to go swimming anyway and figured it was summertime, we have clothes, we'll just go swimming in our clothes. And uh, I had real light shorts on at the time, <laughs> like white shorts and you know that's when um, different printed underwear was popular and so I had the Smurfs that were just uh, showing through all blue when I got out of the water and uh, little did I know my mom and all her friends were lined up on the beach um, watching me and laughing uh, at me so I'm not traumatized um, but uh, it was very embarrassing all right, tell me a story of one of your fun teenage experiences or oh, college. I had a really crazy group of friends, and it's most of them are guys, and most of them I'm still very close to today, but we live all over the place. Like One of them lives in Germany. And um, I guess the two things about that, one is we would come up with all kinds of like just random things to do. Like we would drive, I grew up in a town called Winnetka in Illinois. And we would drive to Evanston, which was like 20 minutes away, and go out to this place called Carmen's and have pizza. And so <laughs> one of the things we liked to do, for some reason, like driving back and forth to Carmen's, is whenever we were at a stoplight, the passengers in the cars would switch cars. So they would like, jump, like you know, so I'd be driving, like one of my friends would be next to me, and we'd get to a stoplight and he'd leave and somebody else would appear and it was a good way to get to know people I guess because sometimes this would happen with like I remember one time we had a couple of like international students that were staying with some of my friends and they thought we were totally nuts but um, the biggest thing that not a lot of people know about me in high school because I hid it very well from my parents is that I used to sneak out at night because I had a window that yeah I was like everyone thought like oh yeah she's so well behaved I used to climb out the window onto this roof down a tree and I would go to Elder Beach, which is right near our house, and I would like go meet my friends at the beach. Um, um, what was a defining um, or influential part of your um, younger self? So I think I really started to um, come into my own in, in college and really start to gain confidence in, in who I was during that time, and I had a, a conversation with my pastor at that time. I was trying to decide between a couple of different internships that I might want to do, and, uh, you know, he was just, looked me point blank and said, you know, when you're, uh, when you have God looking out for you, you're not going to go wrong. Uh, I mean, whatever, whatever path you went with that decision, it was probably going to work out pretty well. And uh, it was insightful for me because it helped me not to overanalyze decisions too much and uh, to trust the, the path that I was on and uh, just truly enjoy it rather than agonizing over decisions. There was one thing that you could tell your past self. What would you tell her? Oh God. I, the, biggest thing I would <laughs> the biggest thing I would also tell my current self um, and that is relax. It's going to be okay. Like just relax. 
have fun. Don't take things so seriously. It's going to be okay. That's the biggest thing. And I probably also might come up with a list of people that I wouldn't date, but <laughs> I'm not going to name them here. But yeah, that's another thing. Like, you know, I do think that any choice you make in your life affects, like, any choice, anything I ever did brought me to where I am now. And so for anyone, if you're happy where you are today, like, I worry about, like, if I changed one thing, you know, I, I might be living in Madagascar right now. I don't know, you know, who knows? So, and I'm pretty happy right now here in Texas where I never thought I would live. Um, but, you know, so I'm sort of hesitant. The big thing is relax, chill out, it's all good. <laughs> uh, what would you tell your past self if you saw them now? I think I would uh, tell myself to just be comfortable in my own skin uh, from the beginning. I think throughout life I learned to worry less and less about what uh, people thought about me and uh, I think I probably would have had a lot less uh, worry in my life uh, if I would have just gone with who I am and, and lived that way to the fullest.